Hello there, I'm Black Wright and I'm broadcasting out the UK and I'm talking about my Jamaican um, people in um, this evening and a couple of things have come up so I felt as though I needed to talk about them because, you know, injustice and bias and all those kind of things, I just have to talk about it. If it's the first time you're passing through, this is Black Bright News. It's a kind of a news channel with a twist because um, I tend to find news items, not all news, but some news items, and I have my little comment on it and I have my opinion and stuff like that. So you can always put the like, the like button or you can put your, th your thumbs down or you can sh share or you can subscribe, whatever you feel like doing, if you like what I talk about. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about about a young man he went into prison for a month he was detained in for a month first night he goes in he's actually forced facilitated by a female police officer um, to be to bugger someone to actually have sex with another man one man holds him down the other man has sex with him the man who has sex with him has AIDS and he reckons he did see the sores on his body but he was made to do it anyway and now he's three years down the line he's got AIDS and it's really quite a tragic story I think he was 23 at the time he says his life is ruined and you know you don't want to stereotype people who go into jail but I'm telling you something you know, you just don't know what people are forced to do when they go into jail, whether they're forced to do it, whether they do it voluntarily or what, especially uh, men who have been in there for a long time. So when they come out of jail, you cannot be having sex without a condom. You cannot, especially if you know that they've spent time in jail. You need to be going to the clinic and, ha you know, and not just because the, the test is clear. The same day, you, 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 the, the time that you meet them and the time that you're ready to have sex or you, the time you've established a relationship with them. Not only for that time, you have to keep rechecking. Don't, and you don't not wear a condom for until maybe six months or a year because sometimes these symptoms have a delay factor. And I'm not saying everybody who goes into jail is, you know, is having anal sex or whatever they do in there. I'm not saying that, but you just do not know as women um, outside, you know, and you meet somebody, especially when you think the majority of black men are in prison. And so when they come out of prison, you know, they then become available men. And, you know, you always have to, you know, that people tend to have a sympathetic heart towards them because some of them, they have been put into jail um, through mis miscarriages of justice, similar to the... Um, similar to the video I did a little while ago about those four guys who were put in, who, well, they only did two, two years in jail, but they were in jail. This guy, this happened to him on the first night he went in, the same day and get pick up. He didn't even get a chance to um, acclimatise and he was only in there for a month and he's now got a life sentence of AIDS or HIV. So all I'm saying is that, you know, it can happen. You do know not you don't know what happens when men go into prison. And the thing is they're gonna to be too embarrassed when they come out to mention it. You think a man is gonna come out of prison and say enough sex with another man, a Jamaican man, both strong. You think he's gonna come out and say enough sex with a man? He's not. So women, you've got to be careful. This man is out now. You know, he's anonymous, he's working, he's back in the community, he's got support and good for him. But you do not know if the people who you're interacting with, you do not know their past unless they tell you. And there's certain parts of people's past they do not disclose under any circumstances because they know about the stigma. Can you imagine meeting somebody if this man was honest? You meet somebody, the man looked nice fix up and everything and in a conversation he says you know i went into prison and i've contracted aids you'd probably you probably distance yourself from that person you're not going to give him a chance you're going to think bloody hell especially if you're not educated about it you're going to run a mile so they're not going to tell you so i'm just saying you've got to be careful when people have got a history where they've spent time in prison you really need to get them check out to make sure that they are clean and it's safe to have a sexual relationship with them. 
And it's so sad that it happens like that. I mean, you know, the amount of people that that happens to, where they're forced to have sex. And, you know, the, these men who are in jail or who have AIDS or HIV, they've got nothing to lose. They don't business. Anyway, um, I did write it down. I'm going to put the link in. I don't think there's anything that I need to add. Um, it does say... Um, after the infection, some people have glandular fever. Like he reckons as soon as he had sex, I think within a, um, I don't know if it was a month or so, but he started feeling ill. So the reaction seemed to be really quick. Maybe that man had full-blown um, HIV for the symptoms to react so quickly. But um, after the infection, some people have a glandular fever, like illness with fever, rash, joint pains, and enlarged lymph nodes which can occur at the time of ser seroconversion. Seroconversion refers to the development of antibodies to HIV and usually takes place between one and two months after infection has occurred. So it doesn't happen straight away. Um, he was one month behind bars before being granted bail. And like I said, he's been given a life sentence with HIV. Um, Yeah, I think that is all. Okay, I'm going to say this bit. Um, according to The Loop, the young man who is one of more than 730 HIV positive clients of Jamaican AIDS Support for Life, JASL, has since been freed of the buggery charge with the assistance of legal representation provided by the non-governmental organisations. So he was, but apparently they said that he actually performed buggery as opposed to them forcing it on him. So he's been freed of that and so now he's supposed to get some kind of support. Apparently there are legal avenues being pursued now about the issue of how he got HIV. The JASL, which is the Jamaica Aid Support for Life Policy and Advocacy Officer, Patrick Laylor, told the Observer in a recent interview, we are pursuing the criminal aspect of the case and now that he is freed of those charges, we are completing the paperwork and legal assessment to begin this matter, Laylor explained. He disclosed that the matter relating to how the 29-year-old alleges to have contracted age, AIDS, well HIV, sorry, has not yet started, but he anticipates that the team could be ready to bring an action, possibly against the state, as early as next month. He said too that no formal complaint has been made against the accused policewoman who facilitated the crime and she remains on duty. The attorneys wanted to get the criminal matter out of the way first as a way forward was much dependent on the outcome of the criminal charges, he explained. He said in the meantime, hailing JASL for helping he has so far received from the organisation. The HIV positive man said, me feel like a man again. He said JASL team members, who he now considered his family, have provided support in every area of his life. He has also started working again after, wo after walking off his previous job when he found out he was HIV positive. As a person with HIV, it was hard for me. But as we said, these, these, these family here are a great family and others can identify this also. He said, adding that the team is always professional and very gentle. They're not forcing the medication down on you. They're dealing with you so gently that you have to take it because you actually feel like you have a friend or a family showing you that they care. That is how they motivate you to take it. Some people would go about it with a whole heap of vexation and argument and so forth when you already vex inside because you have HIV. So the problem is it would stir up more anger so nobody cares, he continued. These are the things he said that motivate him to stand on his own two feet after his diagnosis. They are a family, he said, and they push out a lot. So that is quite a sad case, but I thought I needed to 
uh, put it out there. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.